And we're live. Oh, hi, everyone. <laughs> hi. Look, Ashley made me put an earphone on. <laughs> Ear I think there's two of them. It's technically plural. Earphone. Earphone. Is it two phones? Earphones? I think phones. Headset. Headset. That's not plural. That's Headset. Two or I don't know. I feel like I'm coaching again is what I feel like. This is what <laughs> I used to wear in the box. So it kind of, it, it feels normal. It feels natural. <laughs> um, are you hitting the share button on your side? You know what? I sure can. I, I, had don't, I still don't know how to do it. But I need I to learn the socials too. The socials. I'm not that good. <laughs> <laughs> hey guys, Chris Feshek and Ashley Tullis here doing the weekly drip every Monday at two o'clock. Um, get, well, I say every Monday. She left me hanging last week and y'all all suffered. Uh, but anyway, we got through it. So uh, every Monday we get together at two and we talk about dripping springs, kind of some of the stuff going on in the neighborhood, small businesses, uh, schools, real estate, everything. Um, and this is just what we've decided to do. Getting a lot of positive feedback on this, Ashley. Yes, yes. Um, I like that new headset of yours, Chris. It makes you very official, very calm. Yes. Like You're a voice of the people that we need to hear right now. <laughs> you're so full of it. <laughs> but I am being sincere. I do <laughs> I do think our community needs to hear your voice. There you go. That's that's wonderful. Thank you very much. Um, now, I was going to say something else, and I completely forgot what it was. Oh, I was going to remind everybody that as you're watching, if you've got questions about anything about Drip, make sure you pop them into the comments because uh, we can um, – answer them live. And if there is any feedback or echo, please tell us so we can make Ashley put her headset on as well um, and, and ruin that amazing hair that she's got going on today. Oh, this whole thing. Uh, yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so do, do you want to get kicked off today or should I? Lead the way, friend. Okay, I'll lead the way. I'm going to talk. Ashley mentioned a while ago. Y'all see I'm repping the Torchies Belterra shirt here. Um, if y'all missed it last week on, on Facebook, and, and this is a little bit of self-promotion also, uh, myself along with Ed Mena and Chris Motal, a, a lender that I know, uh, we got together. And and I'll go back even a little bit farther. I used to be a coach and a uh, high school teacher. My wife is still a high school teacher. And we always commented uh, every year because her sister is an elementary school teacher. And we commented every year how the elementary school teachers always get hundreds of dollars of gift cards and they get all these people coming to the classroom to do stuff. And the high school teachers kind of get forgotten because at that point, you know, the, the parents are kind of, eh, you know, our, our kids are old enough. We're going to let them do what they do. And so I'm always looking for ways to try to help the high school teachers out and let them know that they are, you know, that, that they are loved, that, that people are still thinking about them. And so this is the second time I've had a chance to do it. Got together and Torchy's Tacos helped out, uh, put together, I forget what it was, a bunch of breakfast tacos again um, for the high school teachers last Friday. Um, evidently, they were, they were very, very thankful for it. And one of the other things that Torchy's did, and it was crazy. So they were asking me how many teachers. And I said, well, staff and everybody's 190. And they said, well, do you think everybody would eat uh, chips and salsa? No, not really. And so we just came up with a number of 120. And when I go to pick up breakfast tacos, Torchy's has individual chip bags and salsa bags. They've got 100 or salsa cups. They had 120 individual chips and salsa for the teachers that they went around. So not only did they get a bunch of breakfast tacos, they all got their own little sanitary chips and salsa uh, because Torchy's decided that's what they wanted to uh, to give the teacher so it was pretty amazing so if you if you need a large uh, a large amount of torchies tacos or chips and salsa whatever if you're catering for a football event something like that um, get a hold of Mari Vital, M-A-R-I-V-I-T-A-L. She's the kitchen manager over at Belterra Torchies. Um, and uh, hook them up because they're hooking the high school teachers up, treating them right, and, and helping me out. I don't know where I would get 100 and 150, 160 breakfast tacos from on short notice, and they got it pulled together in like three days. So pretty amazing. So Torchies Tacos, not necessarily local Dripping Springs, but they're out in Dripping Springs so and, and taking care of us. So make sure you're taking care of them too. We'll call it Drip Adjacent and they're definitely in the district. That's right. They're absolutely in the district. Absolutely mm -hmm. in the district. And they've got, a, uh, they've got a new taco out right now that I've got to get over there and try. It's called the Tailgater. 
It's fried chicken with queso and hatch chilies, blue cheese, and some ranch dressing, I think, on it. Anyway, sounds pretty amazing. What's your go-to there? Um, I am typically, <laughs> not politically, at Torchy's, I'm typically a Republican, the jalapeno breakfast sausage. Uh, always like my trashy trailer. And if I'm feeling just you know, just obnoxious. I'm going to get an Ace of Spades, which if you don't know, the Ace of Spades is off menu and it's got an egg and that sausage and it's off the charts. So <laughs> there you go. What about uh, you? But you're behaving now, but what's your typical? So not where I line politically, but I'm a Democrat. You uh, like that barbacoa? I love the barbacoa. Absolutely. Uh, yeah, that's pretty much all I get there. Uh, <laughs> My go-to used to be a trailer park extra trashy. So the oh, fried yeah. chicken with the queso on top. Um, but like the older, the more seasoned I become. Uh, it's like just You're less much. trashy. Yeah, it's too much trashy. <laughs> um. <laughs> oh, and a pro tip for everybody. I know you're trying to cut back on some of your glutens and stuff. Yeah. Um, you can get a, uh, you can get any of those bowls so you don't have to get a tortilla with them. So yep. if, you, if people don't know that torches will take care of you if you're doing low carb or gluten free or something like that. So, yeah, my husband's go to is the brush fire in a bowl oh, yeah. which is I think that's the shrimp, right? The brush. Mm, yes. fire is the shrimp. Yeah. Mm -hmm. A little too spicy for, for my taste, but um, that's a, a good go to for sure. Um, yeah, we like torches a lot. I just like tacos a lot. If I'm being yeah, honest, it's, like, yeah, it's tacos. put whatever in a tortilla, I'm going to eat it. <laughs> <laughs> my my wife shared a uh, a little wasn't really a meme. It, what what do you call just a picture? GIF. But it wasn't moving. Oh, that's a meme. Is it a meme? Pictures are memes. Yeah, but it, well, it wasn't, anyway, regardless, it doesn't matter. <laughs> the whole point behind it was uh, you can keep your pumpkin and spice. Just give me tacos. And yeah, yes, yes, and I that's think how I feel. like engaged her in sharing an apple cider because I'm not a pumpkin spice person. And she's like, no, I don't like that either. Yeah, she, okay. No. <laughs> I don't know. Um, yeah. So there you go. Any, uh, any good places to get apple cider around here? My house. Of course. <laughs> so everybody heard that there's uh, 48 people on right now and everybody can go to Ashley's house for hot apple cider. Hold up. 48 people are listening to no, us. No, right I'm joking. Oh. No. <laughs> I just wanted to. That know, sounds impossible. Stress you out a little bit. <laughs> nah, the more the merrier. Um, actually, my aunt turned me on to something uh, when I was pretty young. Um, I don't live in a neighborhood where we get a lot of trick or treaters, uh, but she did. So, in addition to having like the bucket of candy, she would make a huge bash, um, batch of uh, cider and have that with the neighbors. And then she would also do. I mean, maybe it's still called cider, but um, wassail. So the the I've heard of it. the mix with the alcohol in it. I think it's a rum, um, and that was a, a great way for her to get to actually talk with the neighbors and meet the neighbors a little bit better. And I've always taken that to heart. You can make that stuff in a crock pot anyway, so there's plenty to go around. <laughs> I saw another meme. It was a uh, crock pot beer, and it was a crock pot with cans of beer in it with ice. And it was one of those follow me for recipes. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Brilliant. That, that's my kind of crock pot beer. So big day in dripping. Do you know what, do you know what's going on today? Well, the first day the kids are back at school. Yes, it happened. Um, so, we're, still, we're virtual learning. So at any that's moment. That's what I thought. Okay. Yeah. At any moment, Wyatt, um, he's a fourth grader at DSC. He might bust in. I don't know. We'll see. Uh, our family decided to to wait out the first greeting period, but I know lots of parents are rejoicing that um, the kiddos are back and, you know, our prayers are definitely with their educators as they're yes. navigating in person and online. God bless total saints. They are. I can't. Uh, yeah. Eric is still at home for two more weeks, I guess. But then she goes back. So is Drip doing it where the, the teachers are in the classroom and the kids are in the classroom, but they may not necessarily be teaching or in that class? So no. virtual learning or are they actually teaching the class in the classroom? They are teaching the class in the classroom. Oh. At least that's what I've experienced today. Um, okay. So like Wyatt's class, um, I think there's, it's about 50-50. So okay. we'll say 
10 are there, 10 are online. That's not quite the number. Um, so he's zooming in. There's a statement we didn't say before 2020. <laughs> Um, so he's attending like the live instruction and then he has his work to complete and it's happening simultaneously uh, with with the teacher, but he has a couple of teachers. So there still is like a, a kind of a block schedule aspect to it. Um, I've been eavesdropping, but I haven't been a helicopter mom. Is he, chasing out, is he chasing you out of the room saying, mom, get out? He has said that before. <laughs> um now we have not necessarily a problem, but Mama Bear has noticed that there's a beautiful little girl in his class that he's been setting up oh. Zooms with. <laughs> and I'll, I'll be like, who are you talking to? And he'll tell me, and I'm like, that's not what we're doing right now. And he'll be like, sorry, so-and-so, I got to end the meeting. I'm like, you're nine years old, in the meeting. <laughs> Too mature. <laughs> Well, at least it's a meeting and not a date. Oh, speaking right. of dates, actually something I wanted to talk about. Um, dripping has a drive-in. Have you guys been? We have not, have y'all? We have not. But I looked at the lineup and Pretty stellar. I've, I've got to meet the owners. I think that they have, first of all, brilliant business idea. They're yes. going to be great. But um, a sense of humor for sure. Cause one of the features I want to check out is groundhog day. And yes. I'm like, well, that's relevant. That um, is very <laughs> relevant. <laughs> so I'm looking forward to that out on ranch road 12. I haven't um, gotten to visit the property yet, but we anticipate getting to go this weekend. I keep trying to figure out as I drive by, I don't see like a sign as I'm driving by, but I may keep missing it. I know it's on the west side of 12 on the south side of Barton Creek, but is there a sign or a big gate that I keep missing? Not that I've seen. Maybe okay. we should make them a poster. I may need to. <laughs> Why not? <laughs> yeah, that's, uh, that, that's, that's definitely, especially right now, just a relevant uh, business model to... Like, I guess it has gone away in recent years, but I don't know anybody that's going to the actual movies right now unless you're renting out the whole theater. So why not go in a car? I think movie theaters have reopened. Um, they, they are, yeah. Them. Um, so some families feel comfortable with it. Some yeah. don't. And I, I think in time, that'll come come back in a big, big way. Um, personally, I miss the movie theater experience. Um, but I'm that person uh, that'll sneak away by myself in the middle of the day to go see a movie. And like, I won't tell my husband or anything. I'm like, what do I want to go see? I have to share my popcorn. I have to share my soda. Um, I'm that person that drags my blanket in with me. Um, it's awesome. like a whole experience. <laughs> The thing, the things that the things that I'm learning about you. That's that's wonderful. Yeah, um, you and all two people that are watching. I don't know how many are online. Actually, we're up we're up to ten again. Oh, woohoo! So, yeah, we're. I mean, we, we've got great numbers today. So uh, because you're back last week, I think I had like two the whole time. So anyway, yeah. Um, so speaking of, and and I was talking to Amanda Miyamoto, I told you this earlier. So Amanda asked if we would kind of explain to people how we met um, that process and, and how we know Amanda and, and so many other people in Dripping Springs now. So do you want to, do you want to take that? I do. I do. So <laughs> I met Chris on the sidewalk in front of Tilly's. Yep. Literally exactly what happened. That's a, that's a fact. Yeah. Um, I wasn't sure where I was supposed to be going and he just happened to park beside me. Never seen him before in my life. And I'm like, Hey, I'm lost. And he said, I know where to go. And what were we doing? I was about we weren't to say, there to eat. <laughs> no. <laughs> and there's Denise, there's Denise. But here's what I was going to ask you. Why were you and I the only two people on the sidewalk outside of Tilly's? Probably because we were early. Because we're always early. Yeah, that's why. Yeah. Because <laughs> we were the only two realtors and we were both late. That's why. No. <laughs> yes, we, we were. were. We were early. <laughs> no. <laughs> you, you keep telling people that. That's fine. I, I, I'm, I'm okay with being late. I try not to be late. I really do. It drives me nuts. But I really just... don't think we were late. If anything, we were exactly on time. Exactly on time. That's what I'm talking about. <laughs> 
<laughs> um, but yes, yeah, so Chris and I met um, through uh, Leadership Dripping Springs, which is a program that's put together by our local Chamber of Commerce. Uh, we went through class four. So there's been three other classes to us, and then there's another class upcoming. Um, if I understand correctly, um, the feedback from the chamber is they're not quite ready to roll out class five because everything right. is wonky and different. Mm -hmm. So as we get that information, we'll certainly relay that to you. Um, but let's do a quick, uh, Chris, what are your top three favorite things from Leadership Dripping Springs? And I'll answer the same, or I can go first because I don't mean to put you on the spot. No, I want to go first because I'm okay. going to take yours instead of you taking mine. That's fine. Number, number, number one is the people. I mean, Ashley, Denise, uh, Amanda, and, and I'll, I'll forget half of the people that we went through with, but I, since we started, I still talk to everybody uh, at least fairly regularly um, and, you know, see them around town. And it, you know, I, I hadn't been in Dripping Springs all that long, I guess four years when we started it. And so it actually gave me some some contacts that were that were doing things in town outside of a level of just kind of hanging around and running into people at a bar or something. Um, so the people are number one. Um, number two was that first overnight, and I don't know if they're going to do this again, uh, but the overnight and that two day uh, leadership class with Jody, mm -hmm. um, I got a lot out of that. And just so everybody knows, there is a, there's a cost associated with it because, I mean, you're you know you're staying overnight out at Camp Lucy, and then they've got to feed you, and then they bring in um, a professional development. Um, uh, speaker. And then even throughout the process, there's other things that they're spending money on. So there is a cost for you, but it, just that first overnight and, and the stuff that I got out of the class with Jody more than made up for any, any price that they would have charged on it. Um, so that was my second. And then my third favorite thing, my third favorite thing. Let me get back to my third one. You've had a little chance to think, so you go and then I'll, I'll figure out my third one. Yeah. Um, so as same, uh, getting to know the people, putting a face to the name and, um, you know, anybody that knows me knows that I like to volunteer and be involved in our community. And this was just an extension of that, getting to know people at a deeper level. One of the first exercises that they had us do was share our nickname. And then we kind of referred to everyone as uh, their nickname. And there's a few folks that I have to like stop and think like, what's their first name again? Um, for a long time, Chris, you were gunning to me. And I think I even had you saved in my contacts as gunning gunny. for like That's a long funny. time. That is funny. <laughs> So it's it's nice to just get to know people on a little bit deeper level. Um, the class meets once a month and the program, I think, is like nine months long. So you really do have a long lead time to get to know folks. Um, so I really appreciated that. And then um, so I think I stole one of yours. So let me come up with three new ones. No, 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 no. no. The people, I mean, we, we both knew that was going to be number one. Yeah, That's fine. absolutely. Um, the courses that or the classes that we oh, have. Yeah within or programs, I guess is a better thing. Um, each month kind of focused on a different day. Um, at the tippy top of that list, of course, is tourism day. So we learned, you know, where does the money come from? How, what does that component look like? Um, and a lot of it is from the hot tax, hotel occupancy tax. Um, and so understanding that kind of component was really great because with dripping being, you know, your destination for so many weddings and we have so many short term rentals in the area. Um, it was great to understand that component. You can't really talk tourism without talking alcohol. So we got to tour um, several wineries, distilleries, and breweries. Yes. Um, My wife was not happy. My husband was not unhappy. He was relieved we had a driver. Right. That's right. Um, and, we, <laughs> and we were very responsible. I mean, nobody's forcing yeah. you to do any of the tastings, but they are there if you would like. Um, I really enjoyed that program. And then our emergency services program, I found to be really rewarding and very, very interesting. I think we spent six hours at the the fire station and we had different people talking with us and um loved that one and of course um at the very tippy top was our school district day um 
I can't think of many forums where the superintendent is going to take the time to meet with like a dozen citizens and just give them the 411 on literally the biggest business in town. Um, so that was really, really cool. Then we got to actually go on to different campuses um, with my son being at DSC. I'm familiar with that one, but I wasn't really familiar with the other ones. And it just helps me kind of speak to our district in a much more informative way. Yeah. And I was going to say, but before you met, well, I'll go back to why my wife wasn't happy is because I was posting on social media and during that tourism day. And so it was uh, Bell Springs Winery, Dripping Springs um, Distilling, uh, Suds Monkey. <laughs> She's like, I'm, a, I'm working and you're supposed to be working, but you're out bar hopping, basically. Which, she wasn't yeah. unhappy. She was jealous. Well, there you go. That's 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 a better way to say it. Um, <laughs> But I, when you were talking about the, the different classes, um, I, I think the one that I got the most out of was the uh, emergency services day. That just kind of, it, you, you know some stuff that's going on, you know, behind the scenes and you kind of understand what, what it takes, but at the same time you don't. So just the way, you know, having, uh, it was Sheriff Cutler and I can't remember the, um, the fire department, the fire chief that was there. But anyway, just having them kind of go through what, what they deal with, how they deal with it, um, it was, was pretty eye opening. Uh, and then the schools was, you know, was great as well. Again, like you said, you've got a, a superintendent that's going to hang out and, and talk to you. What I felt was a, was a legitimate, authentic, you know, talk. It wasn't just kind of, you know, hitting some high points and getting down the road. Like he, he got pretty thick in the weeds. So very cool. Yeah. Yeah. Those were them definitely my favorite programs, but not to downplay any of the other days that we no. all had to spend together because they were all extremely informative. Um, I remember leaving with tons and tons of notes and it was, just, it was just a little peek behind the curtain within our town. And I really, really greatly appreciated that. Um, if I had the opportunity to take it again, I would 20 times over. Yep. Um, and that's, I, I guess that was uh, the other part that I was going to mention on that is the whole idea behind Leadership Dripping Springs is to get kind of a peek behind the curtain into all of the different things that are going on around town because you can, you know, you can get involved with one thing, but you may not know four or five other things that involve that. Like you can be involved with, uh, you know, the PTA or something and you, you know, you have an idea of what's going on in one school, but you don't know what's going on in the other schools that directly affect that school. So, you know, having having more of a of an all encompassing uh, universal view of what's happening in Dripping Springs. That's that's what leadership Dripping Springs is about. And at the end of the day, trying to find people like Ashley um, and the other people that we went through that are you know that are willing to volunteer their time and their efforts and all that other stuff to try and make Dripping Springs a better place instead of you know just. Uh, I'll stop short on that. But anyway, trying to find people that will be leaders in the community and, um, you know, put their put their money and their time where their mouth is. So. so if I may, I'd really like to plug our project. Oh, yeah. If that would be OK. Um, Absolutely. Because so have, it's something you do. And I really hadn't ever thought about it prior to. Nerd alert. Yes, uh, yes, it is. <laughs> So one of the requirements for the first four classes was to do a project that would um, provide some sort of service to the community, something of public benefit. And we tried a few different things. Um, what I learned about our group is we're some really ambitious people. And sometimes we get a little too, our britches get a little too big for us or we're too big for our britches. I don't know how that saying goes, but that's definitely what happened. Um, so towards the end, unfortunately, our initial ideas were kind of rejected and we had to pivot. So we installed as a class, a really fun geocaching project. So if you download the geocaching, cache app. It's totally free. You can go find hidden caches, so hidden treasure all around town. And um, each person in our class dedicated a spot for one of these geocaches. So you can go find it. Sometimes there's just a log to sign. Sometimes there's a trinket left behind. And what you're always going to get is something informative about that spot and some more history about our town. Um, so I really encourage folks, you know, if they're bored on an afternoon and the weather's nice, just go pop around town. They're really easy to find. And then you'll learn a thing or 10 too. Yep. And especially like, cause you said that y'all do it with, uh, y'all got into it with Wyatt. So mm -hmm. definitely a cool thing to do with your kiddos 
um, as well, not just, uh, you know, not just you as parents running. Around. Yeah, absolutely. There are millions of these all over the world. I mean, we've, we've found them in every state we've traveled to, uh, Paris, London, um, all over the world. We've, we've come across these geocaches and it's just a, a fun little hobby. Um, for my husband and I, it kind of started as something that we would do for free on a date night while we still had a sitter. And like we had already spent quite a bit of money going on on a date because you never get to go on dates once you have kids. <laughs> um, and so we'd be like, well, we have two hours before we have to be back. Might as well use it. So that was like free entertainment for us. And then as our son got older, um, he really enjoys it, too. Uh, my very first job out of college, um, I have a geography and political science degree and I was employed as a cartographer. So I love maps. I think maps are just really, really fun. Uh, so that speaks to the cartographer in me. Um, and it's a treasure hunt. Who doesn't like a treasure hunt? Absolutely. Did y'all ever try to track down any of those old ghost towns that are around Dripping Springs? Um, we have driven, but not explored. Um, okay. That map came from you, right? Yeah. Yeah. Well, but it's not really even, well, I guess it is kind of a map, but your husband overlaid like overlaid it on Google earth or something uh -huh. that, that you sent. Yeah. Yeah. So if y'all don't know, there's, there's little old towns all around dripping Springs. Um, now technically they're ghost towns because there, there's nothing really there anymore. Um, but if you, with a little bit of, of Google help, um, you can find and get some pretty good descriptions of where they are. So, uh, you know, if you're interested in the history of the area, it might be something cool to do. Definitely. Definitely. I foresee myself like when I'm much older, like retirement goal of like driving around with a metal detector. Like yeah. I, I would love that. <laughs> we, uh, we're, we're looking at potentially um, buying an old house in Ure, Colorado, and it was owned by a mining company. Ooh. So in my mind, I'm going, man, maybe I could get into the walls and there's gold hidden in there or something. <laughs> <laughs> It'll probably just be asbestos, but anyway. <laughs> yeah, be careful. Don't breathe that in. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Anyway. All right. We are, we're rolling up here on uh, 30 minutes. Um, you want to, unless you've got anything else specifically you want to talk about, do you want to take cool. us out of here? Yeah, I can do that. Um, I think we've covered some bases. Uh, would love anybody's feedback if they've been to the drive-in on their experience. Oh, and yeah. then next week I'll come back with mine. I'm excited to get out there. Um, I want them to have like, I don't know, maybe they've already thought about this, but I feel like drive-ins like back in the fifties had this deal where like you tried to sneak in as many people as possible. Like it was like a challenge. <laughs> like the clown car people just popping yeah. out. Yeah. Like it was like a competition. Like you paid like your, like a flat ticket rate and then however many people you could squeeze into a vehicle could come. Um, I don't know. I'd sponsor some prizes. They have, yeah. They should have that like a challenge night. That's yeah. exactly right. Probably after coronavirus. Oh because, yeah. We yeah. cannot be that physically close to people. Um, I remember like the first, friend that got a car he had a honda a honda prelude um and i think we had eight people in there at one time of course he was the only with the driver's license so we had no options he was our wheels <laughs> right that's right yeah there's there's not much room in a prelude no uh, shelly's saying that it's a mini I, I guess she's referring to the the screen like it's not a, a giant 80 foot screen or something um not yet but but I bet well, it will. Not yet. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> uh, but she said it is fun. Shelly, what did y'all, uh, what did y'all see? Yes. Tell us more. I, I'm just trying to, uh, I'm trying to imagine how many people you could get into a vehicle like that. That sounds like a really fun challenge, <laughs> like a game. That'd be awesome. Yeah. Yeah. And there could be like different categories, like your two door coupe or your right. four door sedan category. Volkswagen um, bug category. Yeah. Yeah. Like, like if I roll up in my camper van, I don't think that's really fair. <laughs> well, no, but that would be, a, a, again, like you said, a great category because could you yeah. get like 20 people into it? Plus size vehicles. That's right. <laughs> um, have, have we heard from Shelly? She said, yes. I don't know what that means. <laughs> what, what question did I ask? Uh, I think referring to the did size I... of the screen. Oh, okay. Maybe. Uh, She's going to get frustrated with me pestering her 
I don't want to keep pestering her. I love no, her. No, it's uh, yeah, no, I do too. I don't want on that game, It's a game that I play with her. Just, <laughs> I aggravate her, and she yells at me, and then she laughs. So it's just. And a then fun she's game. like, 20 more burpees, go." Yeah, that's basically <laughs> what it is. They saw. Are you? Ooh, Jurassic Park. I guess she saw one. Jurassic Park. Okay. That's a good one. Gassy. Oh, and now, yep. Okay. <laughs> she must be in the middle of a class or something because she's like, go back to teaching, Shelly. <laughs> oh, anyway. All right, guys. That is going to be it for September 14th. We're flying through this, aren't we? I think we're on week eight. Wow. Is it? I think you're right. I think it is. Look at that. You put your mind to something and commit to doing it and you just, you get it done. Yes. Yes, right. this isn't this isn't really work. Like we're just letting people in on our hangouts. Yeah, I know, right? This is this is what <laughs> I was talking about. There's Shelly. You annoy me. Thanks, Shelly. I love you too. Better you than me. That's right. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> All right, guys. And remember, for next week again, we'll be here at two o'clock on Monday. Uh, if you've got questions about anything going on in Dripping Springs, recommendations, or if you've got any information, also let us know. If you shoot us a message ahead of time. Um, we'll talk about it if you get on with us and watch us live like Shelly's doing. Um, we will, <laughs> we'll talk about it live and let me think, oh, to wrap us up again, um, we were talking about if anybody, now that kids are going back to school, guys, if you need anything, um, whether it's school supplies or something like that or whatever, if you're a teacher that needs anything for your classroom, let us know. You can reach out to us directly. Uh, for me, 512-736-1703. And Ashley? You don't have my phone number yet? I don't have it memorized. <laughs> 512-716-9193. That offer still stands. If you prefer to remain anonymous, that's okay too. You can always, always shoot us a text and we'll keep everything confidential. Um, so you need a few items to ease back into school. Um, again, my prayers are up with all of our educators, everyone in the district. Now that we're back together, my, my prayer is that God protects everybody and we don't have a big outbreak that causes everything to shut back down right. and that we'll be able to keep marching forward so fingers crossed that's it progress is a good thing let's yes. keep making progress yes all right drip y'all have a good one see you next time bye